All right, moving on to episode five. So the woman that we see at the memorial here that was hooking up with Kit at that party uh, gets her ass hung upside down, bag over her head, slit her fucking throat, and the blood fills the bag up, um, which is then hung in the tree later or is still attached to her head. I don't know if we could see that or not but whatever this kid gets covered in blood and brings it back to her mom reminded me immediately of halloween six it's raining red it's raining red it's warm i used to love that line when i was when that came out in 95 um i saw it on around i was like 13 i went and saw it with my mom and i loved halloween six when it came out and I remember that was a line that stuck with me. It's raining red. Um, so yeah, anytime blood is raining down from a tree on a little kid, of course I'm going to go back to Halloween 6. <sighs> All right, so the bully comes to pretend to attack uh, freaking Jen and uh, Sadia here. And I'm just like, they're, they're not even that upset with him. Okay. This kid witnessed his teacher's death. He's who found her body along with his other friend. He's already been reprimanded multiple times, but that was at school, so I guess that wouldn't apply here. But he made fun of her mom for killing herself. He possibly attacked her in the, in the parking lot. They don't know if that's true or not. We know it's not true, but he, you know, is... is uh, held responsible for it and they think it's possible that he did it and then he comes and goes again after all these murders are popping up town you would think that finding his teacher dead would have maybe knocked some sense into this guy but fucking fly in here um but no this guy continues to just be a dick it's this character i feel like almost every character in this for the most part are just archetypes of everything you want to see die it's like a pure fan service season, which a lot of slasher movies are essentially that. So for, I guess for anyone who's a slasher fan to get upset with that, I don't know how much of a slasher fan they really are because that's kind of what 80 slashers were all about. You got the archetypes, you got the fucking jock prick who you always want to see die. You got the slutty girl who I never wanted to see die, but maybe other people wanted to see die. Um, so, but this season really packs it on. It makes so many unlikable characters. Um, okay, so the killer is caught in this episode, right? Or is he? I think he is. I think the guy who killed Kit and then this girl at the uh, the tree, the raining red chick. Um, not that that's in this, <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I do think he killed them. Um, and I like that when he's shown the other work, he's all in awe of it and he thinks it's awesome. Now... He could all be lying. It could all be bullshit. How he would have the knife and whatnot. No, I, I do think he did do those killings. But these other killings, I think this is somebody who is looking to seek vengeance for Kit's death. Um, which would further go towards that Angel is the one doing this. He has the most motive of anyone. Um, so... <laughs> As I said, they, they keep painting him like he's the person, which would make it so obvious. So the swerve around it to being back to the obvious guy would make it kind of, you know, um, surprising because of how obvious it is. I keep saying this, but I just, he, all signs are pointing to Angel. Um, we'll see if that continues. Now, the uh, Dan, um, Cassidy's dad, starting to learn people's names we're nearing the end soon here but i'm starting to get the names all right dan just loves to sit online this is how people type when they're angry Arr. um dan's sitting online and he's like finds these alt white right groups and he's just you know smashing away how much he hates everything and everyone and it just reminds me i talk about this all the time like it reminds me of like how I always think that people are bigoted, people, if people are racists or sexists or whatever, as progressive as a country as we live in, as progressive as a time as we live in, because just look around at the majority of the media, it very much leans left pretty hard. There's very little um, 
representation for the right, which, you know, I'm not here to get political, but um, I don't really have a huge issue with that, of course. But for people who do, especially like super hardcore racists or bigots, as I said, I mean, with gay marriage and all the things that are going on right now with this progressivist culture is becoming and has becoming has been becoming and as progressive it's moving forward towards and it's just going to keep getting more and more so it just seems like they'd be so fucking miserable all the time i don't know why you choose to live like that like maybe i don't know get with the fucking times maybe open up your mind a little bit so you're not so miserable all the time i mean just for yourself be selfish about it do it, fucking accept people for who they are. I mean, crazy, right? A novel fucking concept. But accept people for, for who they are just so yourself, you can be happy. Be fucking completely, completely selfish about it. Who gives a shit? Everybody wins, um, but especially you. So I just I watch this stuff and I think about it. I've talked about this many, many times in the past. So just looking at movies and television and, and the majority of, of uh, you know, what's pumped into our eye sockets all the time um it very much leans hard left and progressive and um towards uh acceptance of homosexuals and blacks and minorities and the whole thing <laughs> it just it seems like a world that would piss these guys off and they would never not be angry and just to watch him typing on his keyboard at all times throughout the show you go 10 years ago and he's so pissed how who helps white people and all this shit it's like this guy, holy fuck, man. What a miserable existence this guy has. Um, but yeah, anyway. So, all right, all right moving on. <laughs> I just couldn't help but think about that when I saw that. Um, and the druid seems to be looking at a picture of Kit kissing that guy. So I think that's the druid that they have caught in that moment, I think. Um, maybe that's obvious in the thing. But yeah, I do think that he did do those killings. Um, and Violet stabbed through the top of the head. Holy shit. Okay. There's something to be said for really hardcore, fast-paced brutality in films. Yes. It can be intense. I mean, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, when he's stabbing that freaking night nurse and whatnot, he's bringing down the knife as hard as he possibly can. That's brutal. No doubt about it. I love that kind of stuff. But then there's the other side of it which for me is even more brutal. And that's when they slow things down. The killer takes the knife and just slowly pushes it through her head and then her eye like goes, like one eye just goes up to the right. And it's so eerie and it's so fucked. And it reminds me of the first time I saw Jason X in theaters. And he took that, I've seen a thousand neck breaks and every one of them, you know, there's, there's different varying degrees of the brutality of neck breaks. But the quintessential neck break for me is in Jason X because he takes the guy's neck and he just slowly rotates and it's just like <coughs> oh it's it just added to the fucking insanity of it and it was like oh like you just you grab at your neck like oh my god that's so horrible it's so horrible but such a brutal beautiful kill um and this is another one I, when you slow things down it just it's even more vicious to me and to watch her and she's a character you wanted to watch die so bad i was just like please kill this woman i hate her so much and it was like yes like i feel you know you kind of feel bad that you're rooting on for somebody to die so horribly alongside her husband but they're both gone but violet um her husband i didn't really have an issue with the guy i can understand where he's coming from you know, living in the closet like that and having to deal with that shit. That's why I always have said in the past, like, this is why I believe gay people are not choosing their lifestyle. Who the fuck would choose to live like that? To live in the closet? To fucking, you know, the, the, the adversity that they face and all the shit that they have to go through. There are people who have overcome it or have lived great lives like that. <laughs> They're on the rarer side of things, I think. Maybe more, maybe less and less um, as it's more progressive as we become but that's always been uh, one of my arguments is like <laughs> nobody would want to live that lifestyle the way that fucking you have to f deal with all that shit and come out of the closet I never had to come out of the closet as a straight man okay I never had to fucking figure out who was going to be on my side about things what parent was going to talk to me like who the fuck would want to live that life 
trust me, these fucking people are not choosing this. They didn't just go, you know, I think I'm just going to be gay. That sounds so awesome. No, no. <laughs> it doesn't sound awesome. Um, I mean, nothing against it for me personally. Whatever the fuck you want with your life. And I support it completely. It's just does not seem like a lifestyle that I would want anything to do with because of all the fucking bullshit you have to deal with. But more power to them for being able to do it and stick into who they are. Anyway, that's not what I was... Now I sound like I'm the one who's fucking got a uh, social justice warrior agenda. No, just went with the episode. All right, let's move on.